All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of stand-up for you, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. I don't know who that was, but thank you. Um, all right, so what am I going to do? I guess I, guess I just should just get into it. There's no, no easy way to segue from music to stand-up. So, um, so I was, I was reading an article, I was reading like a newspaper article, and it was about this mother who, who wanted to sue a brothel because her son was going to the brothel all the time, because they were having a, this is my favorite, they're having a lunch special. <laughs> it's brilliant, they're having a lunch special, which is like 50 bucks, and you get like a pie and a Coke and a blowjob. And <laughs> she wanted to sue them. It's like a genius. Um, I think this is the greatest marketing campaign that I've never heard. And, um, because, because like you, the brothel is the one industry, it's an amazing industry that you cannot, advertise in the traditional manner. Like, you can't put ads on TV, you can't, you can't flyer people advertising your brothel, because what would that be? What would a flyer for a brothel be? It'd be like one of those dirty fucking milk bar, porno <laughs> magazines, so like faces and lips and stuff, and like little price tags just underneath. They're like, eh, lips, blowjob, $50 guy sitting in a couch with like a Coke and a pie, and this is legs kicked out from the recliner. $50! Um, Something like that. It'd be bizarre and disgusting, and that's amazing. But the, my favorite thing about this story is picturing the scenario, picturing the scenario of going in, because I imagine these are usually quite well <laughs> furnished and like deceptively beautiful places. So you go in, you sit on like the fine leather couch, there's a beautiful mahogany table ahead of you taking all the scenery, there's like women in like lingerie and stuff trying to seduce you to do whatever. And then you, your eyes go over into the corner and there's like a hole in the wall with a bay marie full of like dirty pies and a coke fridge and just like an old lady, like a white jacket, hair net, gloves, and you go to her afterwards and she's like, ah. Did you have a good time, love? Here's your pie. Have a Coke. Oh, she's probably the ex-mom of the house or something like that. It's just, I love that dichotomy, that juxtaposition. It's amazing. It's disgusting, but it's amazing. And uh, that's all I have to say on that. So, moving on. They enjoyed it. I don't know about you guys, but they enjoyed it. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, because it's, it's not like music. You have to clap after I'm done. Um, These are two different mediums. So... Medium. Because then you'd be clapping after every sentence. He's done. Yay. Stop. See? Stop it. Um, so... I'm a little bit older than most of the people here, I imagine. And... Um, I was just wondering... When did kids' names become fucked? <laughs> like, when did that happen? When, like, did I miss a generation where there was normal names and then kids' names just became absolutely fucked? Because every time I kind of meet someone with some ridiculous kind of pseudo kind of combine name of like two names of people and three names of some other person and some ridiculous thing like that, it's like some kid comes home from crash, this is my friend Soap Melon. Soap Melon. Hi, Soap Melon. What the fuck is wrong with your parents, Soap Melon? <laughs> my parents were bogans. <laughs> Yay. That's fucked, Soap Melon. What the fuck is wrong with you? The thing about, I think there should be some kind of law that constricts what you can call your kid because basically, uh, it shouldn't even be a law, it should be common fucking sense. Basically, the, the more psychological damage your, the name you give your kid, like the less you should think about giving that kid that name. Fucking soap now, what the fuck is wrong with you? Piss off, get fucked. And I think, <laughs> what I think is that, because these names often come from young parents, young parents who, I think this is like the result of vengeful parenting. This is what I think. I think bad names come from vengeful parenting because these people get impregnated young. They're like, oh, you fucked up my life. So now I'm gonna fuck up your life. Welcome to the world, Soap Melon. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. 
that's exactly where I think bad names come from. And I think you can tell when there's like a lineup of children, I think you can tell the ones whose parents hated them, especially when they're siblings. Like if one kid has a really regular name or one kid has just a fucked name, like, oh, you were an accident, weren't you? What the fuck's wrong with you? It's like, oh, this is my daughter, Tiffany. Say hello to the man, Tiffany. Tiffany's like, oh, hello. It's a very good Tiffany. I'll figure, Angel. And this is my son. This is my son, fuckface. Say hello to the man, fuckface. Fuckface is like, hello. It's like, all right, get fucked. Clearly, Tiffany is the lesser loved in that relationship. Um, who calls their daughter Tiffany? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, now, now, the wonderful thing about the name Fuckface, though, is that it's a nice gender-neutral name. You know, anyone could be a fuckface, really. Uh, you know, like, these guys could be... Any of these guys could be a fuckface. Any of those guys could be a fuckface. Anyone back here could be a fuckface. It's fun. It's a good name. Fuckface. It's a good confession. Yes, I'm fuckface. Um, that's great. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think that's really all I have for you. And I'm going uh, to wrap it up. Because I only had a couple of minutes. So, coming to the stage is... Nick Costello, am I, am I right? Yes, Nick Costello, I, are you around? Yeah. Have I pulled you from the bar? Am I rude? Should I have found out who you are first? There he is. <laughs>